Well, amen. How many of you like new stuff? Uh, I got a new haircut. <laughs> Thanks for all that applause. Uh, they clapped for me earlier. Now, I noticed the second time Pastor Mark said clap, only a few of you did. I'll be praying extra for you to clap this week. <laughs> uh, again, it's really good to see you. Uh, man, the holidays are crazy, aren't they? They're just so full. Uh, it just I'm kind of, I, I love the, the Christmas season. I love all that we get to experience. But I'm honestly glad to be getting back to normal. I know we're still kind of in the middle of the holidays. We have many people still... Uh, traveling and, and visiting family, and, and uh, you may still have some family time planned. And, and I want to uh, just encourage you, remember those people in prayer uh, as they travel, as they go forth. And uh, one thing that I want to do before we get into today's message, uh, last week we talked about the ghost of Christmas past. This morning we're going to deal with getting past our past, getting over uh, those things that, that try to haunt us, because they will come back from time to time. Uh, the big thing that I want to talk to you about uh, today is going to be how we avoid getting stuck in the past and how we can move forward into this new year. Uh, I've got a little bit of a ring if we maybe could get some help on that. I wanted to go over 10 things just quickly that uh, in 2018, it, overall it was a good year, but how many of you had some difficulty this year, had, had some problems in 2018? Uh, there, there's some things that, you know, we're probably glad the calendar's about to roll over, that it kind of feels like a fresh start. I don't know what it is about January. I mean, technically, uh, January 1st is just the same as the day before it, but it feels new. It feels fresh. It feels like a clean slate in a lot of ways. But it's good to reflect. While we don't want to get stuck in our past, we do want to learn from our past. Kind of the, the thing that I want you to remember is we want... Our past to inform our future, you know, to teach us so we don't make the same mistakes, but we don't want it to completely conform our future, keep us from growing, keep us from reaching out and doing new things and advancing the way God wants us to. Because many of you raise your hand, you have painful things that happened this last year, maybe stuff you're carrying from years before that, and, and I don't want to mislead you. Uh, there, there's an old adage that people say, anybody ever heard the phrase, time heals all, all wounds? How many of you know that's not exactly true? That you got stuff that, man, you remember it from years ago, and it, those same emotions well up in you. That same sadness might grip you, or that worry might try to come back. And ultimately, time doesn't heal all wounds, but Jesus Christ can. And I really believe that. And I'm just saying that because I'm up here in a church. I really and truly believe that's the only way we get the help and the healing that we really need in this life. And so I want to look back at 2018 just briefly. Ten things kind of popped to my mind. I mean, there, there's more than ten great things that God did for us as a church family. But to share some things from our past, I, I jotted down. Uh, the Number one I put down was our life center. Uh, the, the, the fitness center, the outreach in the community has been phenomenal. The life center has been open a year now. And it is just a roaring success. We even had a, a jiu-jitsu school in there. We, we've had all sorts of classes for uh, you know, students in our area, uh, Landon has just a, done a phenomenal job as our, as our Life Center director. It's been a blessing and an outreach in our community. Uh, this time last year, our students and our leaders uh, went to Winterfest. We're actually going to be going back. You may have seen that on the screens. We'll be going back later on this month. And it was a life-changing time. I know that many people, they've never been the same since that experience. You may want to look into that more. It's specifically designed for teenagers. And, and, and young adults, leaders of that nature, but uh, it was just a life-changing event for us. We had, in the springtime, our Easter egg extravaganza, and it was the biggest attendance. Uh, we had some 300-some-odd kids chasing Easter eggs. We hid over, it was almost 15,000 eggs, and it took them about 15 seconds to <laughs> vacuum those bad boys up. There were so many kids. But, but out of that, we got to minister to many families. Many came on Easter Sunday, and we celebrated over 20 salvations alone on Easter Sunday. Souls in the kingdom. And some of y'all are here today that came on Sunday. Uh, our Vacation Bible School also had a record attendance last summer. Y'all, I've already got Vacation Bible School materials that came in the mail the other day. We started really in January working on it. And because of the investment, it's a week-long ministry. It's, it's intensive, and thank you to those that helped. 
Uh, if you've never helped with Vacation Bible School, we hope you'll find a place to serve there this year. We saw over 40 kids, uh, pre-K to fifth grade, give their hearts to Christ last year during the VBS. It was an amazing, amazing week. And as part of our Vacation Bible School, uh, the Serving Orphans Worldwide Bike Tour, some of y'all remember Pastor Gennady? He's from, he's from the Ukraine. Uh, he's just a, a powerful testimony. He runs an orphanage there right on a war zone, right on the line there between uh, Ukraine and, and Russia. And he came and gave his testimony and had some of the sons with him that he and his wife had adopted. And they were biking all the way across America uh, to promote uh, orphan care, to promote adoption, and just ways to rescue these kids. And they stopped right here in Iowa Park. I thought it was so amazing. And because of y'all, because of Lakeview, we raised over $7,000 for orphan care uh, for serving orphans worldwide. I thought that was great. And uh, I thought you might be more impressed with that. But anyway, it's cool. Uh, <laughs> Liberty Fest, our, our big uh, 4th of July celebration that we get to share. The city puts on a great fireworks show and because uh, of this location we have that God blessed us with, we get to share in that. And it was a record turnout there, Mark 209. Y'all remember then? There were awesome gospel singers that came and, and blessed us. Our chunk retreat was uh, the biggest one we've ever had. We had over 400 people register, actually sign in at our chunk retreat. We had to move it inside because of the weather, and it was actually a blast. And uh, then just a couple weeks ago, uh, we had our incredible Christmas play. And again, most people we've ever had in the Christmas performance, we had almost 200 people here in the sanctuary uh, to, to see that. And this was a phenomenal thing. And, and I'm, still getting, I'm still getting feedback on people who've committed their life to Christ, that have had a life change because of the testimony, the gospel that went forth that Sunday. It's, it's just phenomenal. I, I didn't list these, but I'm also so proud of our Wednesday night kids program that launched this fall that they're just blowing that up. It's, it's incredible. I'm so glad to have Pastor Mark on board. Y'all gave me a hand. Would you give him a hand? For He's doing so much work behind the scenes and, and just what is, is a blessing to us already. I look forward to just continuing to work together and seeing what God's going to do. And just uh, so many of you serve in so many ways. I thought of Jeff and, and Larry and uh, Vicki Roderick, uh, Vicki and Ronnie Moore, those that prepare meals week after week for kids, for our breakfasts and things. Just We've got people teaching grow groups, people that serve in our Kingdom Kids ministry. Just thank you for what you do. The tenth and final thing that I thought of was personal. It was for me. I'm, I'm celebrating the fact that Victoria and I didn't have any more kids in 2018. <laughs> Hallelujah. Mm. Shunned out. I felt that one. Uh, you can't say that. But I did. Uh, but as good as 2018 was, as great of a year as it was, I'm really, I, I'm not just saying it because I have to. I feel an expectancy. I feel good things are coming in 2019. And I want you to feel that way. I want you to expect God to do. God is good. Amen. So why don't we think he's going to do bad to us? Why don't we go through life full of dread, full of worry, worrying about the, the past? God loves you. You need to love you because he's watching over you. And that's a powerful thing. This morning, our message is simply titled, Get Past the Past. How do we do that? Getting past that stuff that tries to hang on to us, that tries to haunt us again. And I want to look again at the scripture that I shared with you at the beginning of last week's message. Isaiah 118 in the New Living Translation says, Come now, let's settle this, says the Lord. Though your sins are like scarlet, I will make them as white as snow. They are, though they are red like crimson, I will make them as white as wool if you will only obey me. And, and can I ask you, if you've got your uh, sermon handouts, you should have also been handed two note cards. If you'll hang on to those, hopefully you have a way to write down. During today's message, I want to I ask you to prayerfully consider two things and use a note card for each of them to, to jot them down. Only you're going to see it. It's just for your discretion. But I want you to think of something from your past. Maybe it's something you feel guilty about. Maybe it's someone you feel angry at. Maybe it's a failure in life that, that worries you or something someone's done to you. But something that haunts you from your past that you're saying, I really struggle getting over this. And you know, like we talked about last week, sometimes we'll get over it and then the enemy will try to bring it back later. Something that just follows you around. Some of you I see nodding your head. You know exactly the kind of thing I'm talking about. And I want you to write that down on one note card. For the second one, and, and you can do this while, while I'm preaching, you're not going to offend me, but the second one I want you to prayerfully consider. What is something you want to see change in the future, in your life? 
It may be a, a, something about your character that you want to see developed. It may be a, a goal in life that you want to see God help you fulfill. You believe God's called you to uh, do, do something different with your career or with your family or whatever it may be. Something in your heart and you're like, oh, I sure would love to see this happen. Be, be bold. It may be something you don't even know how it could happen, but you'd love to see it happen. I'd like you to write that on the second card as you follow along today. Before we jump full, full force into the message can I ask you to do me a favor? Would you pray for me? And, and would you pray with me for God to bless our time this morning? But let's pray. Heavenly Father, God, I thank you for every person that's here today. Lord, we pray for those who are sick in body, those that couldn't be here because of travel. God, keep your hand upon them. But Lord, anoint this time. God, people have given up their time to be here, and I want it to be useful and purposeful. So I ask for your help. Speak to us and have your will. In Jesus' name, and those that agree, said, Amen. 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 So, getting past our past, like we said, time doesn't really heal our wounds. Only the Lord can. Only Christ can. So, why do we get stuck in stuff that we weren't made to get stuck in? The Bible says that, that God works everything together for good to those who love Him and who are called according to His purpose. So, if you love God, He's trying to make everything work together for good. So, it's never God's fault if we get stuck in a bad place. God wants good for us. And Jeremiah says he knows the plans he has for us, plans to prosper us, not to harm us. So if that's true, if we really believe the word of God is true, what is it that occurs in our heart, what is it that happens in our spirit that can get us stuck in past mistakes or regrets or whatever it might be? I want, I want to just go over a few things if you're filling in the blanks with us on your sermon outline. The first thing that I think gets us stuck is we have a wrong understanding. That's your first blank. The, a wrong understanding. Of forgiveness. We talked a lot about forgiveness last week, so I'm not going to just belabor the point. You can go back and watch it on YouTube or, or on our website. But uh, we, we spoke about how unforgiveness, I, I was, again, blown away by the social media response. I, I've continued to get people email and call and, and private message that said they struggle with unforgiveness. And overwhelmingly, the majority of them struggle with forgiving themselves for either things they've done, some even that went through severe abuse. Someone else did a horrible thing to them. They blamed themselves. They say, I must have done something. I wasn't strong enough to, to fight back. or wasn't bold enough to speak out. And, and the enemy is causing them to blame themselves even for things that others have done to them. That's a heartbreaking thing. And please know, if someone has done something to you, don't, don't take that burden on yourself. That, that God doesn't look down at you or think less of you. And so we don't ever want to get stuck because we have a wrong understanding of forgiveness. Three things that I think can, we can misunderstand about forgiveness, and I put them under this. First, forgiveness is not minimizing the seriousness of the offense. Forgiveness is not minimizing it. Some people think, well, if I forgive them, I'm saying what they did is okay. No, you're not minimizing what they've done. And I say forgiveness is really for you. As much or more than it is for the other person. Because they may not want to receive it, but you still need to give it. Because you need to get that toxic, that, that, those feelings, you need to get them away. Don't let them keep hurting you. Amen? Amen? And it does not minimize the seriousness of what they've done to forgive someone. The second thing that we can misunderstand about forgiveness is it is not reconciliation. You can forgive someone and they still don't become your best friend. And you know what? That's okay. That, that may happen that way. We always hope for reconciliation. Uh, you know, the Bible says God hates divorce. And some people hear that, that that means God hates divorced people, and that is not so. He just knows the pain, the heartache that it causes. Any of you that have gone through it, you wouldn't wish that on, on anyone you care about. And it, it's, it's heartbreaking, and, and, and I hate that people have to go through it. I don't hate you for going through it. The Lord does not hate you for going through it. He just doesn't want us to be in pain. He's our Heavenly Father. And sometimes things, they, they're, they're not able to be reconciled. Okay? It just happens. And you can still forgive somebody, but things, that relationship may not be exactly the same. And we need to understand that. We're humans. Our relationship with God can be fully restored. Amen? Amen. People can be more difficult than the Lord to restore things with. It's just true. The third thing, forgiveness is not forgetting what happened. And we spoke about how the Lord, uh, you know, He does remove our sins from us. When, when we get forgiveness from God, the Bible says He removes our sins as far as the east is from the west. But in reality, that's hard to do as a person, to forget what people have done. And so you think, well, I can't forget what they did. 
that doesn't mean that that should stop you from forgiving them. Because the Lord ultimately doesn't forget the way we think of it. But the way the Bible actually says it is he remembers no more our sins. He, he chooses. He knows what we did. But he's not going to let it affect our relationship any longer. And, and I want to tell you, again, if people don't want to be reconciled, you, you've got to let them, I mean, that's their prerogative. That's their decision. But don't let that affect you. You know how you get around some people and you instantly feel tension? Don't let them have that power over you. Forgive them and move on. And, and, you know, one way I heard it said, and I thought it was funny, you've probably heard the, the old saying like, not forgiving someone or being mad at someone, it's like drinking poison and think it will hurt them. I heard an even more realistic one, I think, to me. It's like lighting yourself on fire and hoping you'll get them with smoke inhalation. You know, that, that's just ludicrous. You would never do that. That's hurting yourself uh, more than it would them. And I heard one minister say this, and it's it just a great thought. Anybody remember Angry Birds? Is that still a thing? I, my kids have moved on to Fortnite and whatever. But there used to be this game called Angry Birds. This is really spiritual. You'd glad, be glad you were hearing this. Uh, there was this game, and the, the weird thing about angry birds is the little, the little bird things, you know, they're like, meh, they make the noises. I can't believe I'm talking about this, but here we go. Uh, did you know what you do? They, they are trying to get back at these pigs that have stolen their eggs. Y'all, this is what's wrong with the future of America. These are what our video games are now. But anyway, these birds are mad at these pigs, and what they do, they launch them. What do they do? They launch themselves, don't they? They use themselves as a weapon. Sometimes we'll become angry birds at other people. And we will launch ourselves. We will harm ourselves to try to hurt them. And I tell you, angry birds, here's the thing about it. Even when they get those pigs, they harm themselves doing it. And there's always a new level. There's always new stuff you've got to try to do and defeat. It goes on and on and on seemingly endlessly. And I tell you what, if you, if you try to fight people that way, you're going to end up harming yourself at least as much, if not more, than you do. Them. And so we want to better understand forgiveness so we don't get stuck in the past. I think one of the big reasons people get trapped in guilt, they get trapped in regret or anger or hatred, whatever it might be, unforgiveness is a big root cause. You either can't forgive someone else or yourself. And so let's look at two other reasons that I believe we get stuck in the past. The next one, we don't think it's fair. What happened in the past wasn't fair. And y'all, I, I get it. Life is not fair. It's really not. And I, I don't want to, uh, I don't want to say this like cruel, in a cruel way, but can I just be honest with you? We really don't want to be treated fairly by the Lord. Let that sink in for a second. If we really got what we deserved, it would be a whole lot worse than anything this life could throw at us. The Bible says all have sinned. Even guys with great haircuts are not perfect in God's sight. <laughs> I love watching y'all's responses when I say weird stuff. <laughs> but it's true. We think sometimes, oh, that person is so, they're doing so good in life, or I just wish I could be like them. No, we're all messed up. We're all in need of a Savior. I'm thankful that He's helped me overcome my past and those things. But the reality is whatever happened in your past, it may not seem fair, but be glad that we don't get what really is fair. In Matthew, and I didn't put all the scriptures. If you want to just look with me in your notes, Matthew 18, 21 through 35. I didn't put all the verses. I, I challenge you to read it on your own, that, that chapter. Just get your Bible out because there's many verses I'm going to skip over just for time. But it says, Then Peter came to Jesus and asked, Lord, how many times shall I forgive my brother when, his sins, when he sins against me, up to seven times? Peter's so caring. Jesus answered, I tell you, not seven times, but 77 times. Therefore, the kingdom of heaven is like a king who wanted to settle accounts with his servants. And then the next few verses describe this parable of this king who wanted to settle accounts. And then he says finally in verse 35, This is how my heavenly father will treat each of you unless you forgive your brother from your heart. He says this. We don't think things are fair. Again, this week I want you to go back and read that parable there in, in Matthew 18. This king, he ends up forgiving someone of a great debt. A denarii it describes. And, and really the amount of money would be like thousands of dollars. And our money would be a lot of money. 
And he just forgives his servant that day. He forgives this man. And he's the king. And instead of throwing him in prison, instead of having him locked up or even executed, whatever, he just forgives it. And then that man turns around and goes out right after he's been forgiven of this massive amount. He goes out and finds someone that owes, owes him like 10 bucks. And he shakes him for the money. You know, he just gets all bent out of shape and has that man arrested because he can't pay him back right then. He does not extend that same forgiveness that he was just given. And again, remember, the past may not seem fair, but be glad we don't really get what we deserve. Be aware of the great debt that God has paid for us. He's done more for me than I ever deserved. And how many of you are like me? You still find ways to try to mess up, even after you give your life to God. But the Bible says His mercies are new every morning. That's what's awesome about this. His grace is sufficient. So no, it's not fair because we get more than we deserve. So don't get stuck in the past thinking things aren't fair. Be, be aware of what God has done for you so you won't look at the world in a wrong way. The, the third thing, we, we just simply think we can't do it. We think I can't get over my past because that's how it's always been and that's how it always will be. I have felt this way for so long. I have been treated this way for so long. I just might as well get used to it. Any of y'all know what I'm talking about? You give up. You just say I can't do it. I want to submit to you a passage of Scripture. that, that In Philippians 4.13, it should be life-changing. One of my favorite verses of Scripture. It says, I can do everything. A lot of traditional translations say all things. Everything through Him who gives me strength. Now notice these words here. It says, He gives me strength. That doesn't mean he always does everything for you, but he gives you the power to be able to overcome those things you face in your life. We sometimes pray to God, Lord, help get me through this. And he says, I already gave you the strength to get over it. Just keep walking. Eventually, you're going to get past that thing. Amen. Yea, though I walk through the valley, the shadow of death, thou art with me. And I'm going to keep on walking until you know what? I'm going to see a sign that says, now leaving the valley of the shadow of death. Amen. And that, that was worth whatever you put in the offering right there. Just that truth right there. Praise God. But it's so true. We just think we can't do it. Yet, yeah, you can't by yourself. It's the whole point. So we have Christ for. So lean on Him. Quit thinking you can't and think about how He can. Amen. Now when we do these things, when we start recognizing, oh man, I'm getting stuck. We need a way to get unstuck. We need a way to get out of this mess that we've got ourselves in. And I want to talk about how we can get that clean slate as we look at 2019. I'm just going to give a little plug here and then I'm going to get back to the message. We're, we're providing, we're, God has put some things on our heart, the ministry team here, to, to give to our church family, to give to our community, hopefully as many people as want to get involved. You've heard us talk about the Prayer First initiative. Look, it will be life-changing to us as the body of Christ if we will learn to trust God before we let ourselves worry. If we will pray about something before we worry about something. If we will pray about something before we get mad about something. And y'all, it is tough to do that. While we're doing 21 days of prayer is it takes about 21 days to form a new habit. So I challenge you, get on the website or you can talk to me about it. Become involved. We're making this available to you. It will only do you good if you utilize it. Remember, God gave you strength. You can do all things. You can do this. You can participate in this. But you have to put forth the effort. He gave you the strength. But you have to utilize it. And so when we talk about this clean slate, these grow groups we talk about, man, the Bible says a lot of times we're healed. Not, all, not some of the time, all the time. We are healed by confessing our sins to one another, by, by talking to other people about our problems, talking through them. You know what? Sometimes when you talk to the people honestly, you realize you're just as messed up as I am. Now, I wasn't pointing at any of y'all right there, but... You understand what I'm saying? Sometimes you feel so alone. You feel so broken, so, so messed up. And then you find out you have a past too. And maybe they've gotten past some stuff you haven't gotten away from yet. And they can help give you encouragement and guidance. These grow groups are a wonderful place to break down where, where, where real, real relationships happen. And we believe that's where real life change happens is in the context of relationships. It's when you actually get to know people. Instead of just coming to church and going, how you doing? Fine. We all know there's a lot going on behind that word fine. 
We have a lot of life that we have to go through, a lot of stuff that we struggle with. So let's talk about this clean slate. That's the end of the commercial. 1 Corinthians 1, 25 through 28 says, For the foolishness of God is wiser than man's wisdom, and the weakness of God is stronger than man's strength. God shows the foolish things of the world to shame the wise. God shows the weak things of the world to shame the strong. He chose the lowly things of the world and the despised things and the things that are not to nullify the things that are. I want to really focus on that verse 25, that the foolishness of God, it's wiser than man's wisdom and the weakness of God is stronger than man's strength. What I'm about to say to you, these, these final things, and I'm well aware that the Cowboys play at noon, but the Lord wants to speak to you, so just... Bear with me a few minutes. But what, what, I, what I want you to hear this morning, these, these next things we're going to walk through, is how we get that clean slate. And again, it takes effort. It takes uh, participation on our part. And, and there's three things that I just want to share with you quickly. But before we get there, understand, they're not going to be what our humanity wants to hear or do. Remember that first scripture we read in Isaiah? At the very end it says, I will wash you, even though your sins are red as scarlet, right now, they're that bad. I can change them right now. But what's that last line? If you will only obey me. We have to listen to God if we want to see God's work in our life. We have to be willing to do what he asks us to do. God's a gentleman. He never forces his will on us. He allows us free will, choice. We have the strength to do great things, but we have to step up and do them. Amen. And so these next things I'm going to tell you, the foolishness of God, trust it. It's going to seem foolish to our, to our human mind, but it's wiser than man's wisdom. Because can I just tell you, if you've been struggling with the same thing for years and years or even weeks or weeks, even just a little while, and you're like, this thing is just getting up, it's overwhelming me, it's lo I'm losing sleep, I'm losing peace, whatever. Can I tell you, quit doing it your way, because how's that working for you? Let's try the Lord's way and believe for great things in our future. The first thing is pray for them. Those people that hurt you, those, those things in your past that people have done to you. Remember, this all kind of goes back to unforgiveness. We're going to talk about how to forgive those things in our past because that's how I believe we get past them. Pray for those that may have done wrong. In Matthew 5, it says, in verse 43 and 44, you have heard that it was said, love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But Jesus says this. He says, but I tell you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. Sounds like foolishness, doesn't it? Remember, the foolishness of God is wiser than man's wisdom. And if you will pray for people, instead of just getting mad at them, two things happen. One, the Lord may can help that person. Because how many of you know, you can argue with somebody until you're blue in the face, and you can be right. Have you ever had somebody argue about something? Didn't you? The proof is right there that they're wrong, but they're not going to admit it. So why don't we waste our breath? Why don't we keep doing those same things? Let's try out God's way. Pray for them instead. And, I'm saying, and I don't mean pray for them like, Lord, strike them down. <laughs> pray for them, which leads into this next thing, which is bless them. Bless your enemies. Foolishness, I know. And now I want to read this scripture, but then I want to share something with you. It says in Luke 6, but I tell you who hear me, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, bless those who curse you, even if they're still doing it, bless them. Pray for those who mistreat you. And it's, it's kind of echoed in Romans 12, 14. Bless those who persecute you, bless and do not curse. Understand, don't bless them and then curse them right after them. Bless them and leave it there. Do good to them even if they're going to do bad things. To you, One of the most powerful testimonies I've ever heard uh, is a, a lady whose ministry is worldwide. I mean, if you know uh, Joyce Meyer, if you know her story, her father abused her sexually, physically, emotionally, whatever you want, until she moved out when she was 18. She's made this public, if you haven't heard this before, so I'm not sharing, but, but she shared it at a ministry conference, and I heard other people talk about it, and I researched it, and it's, 
It's incredible to, to me what she did. I didn't know all the extent of what had gone on with her father. She got out of the house at 18. She was a child, y'all. She didn't deserve any of that. She wrestled with feeling like she had done something wrong or that she had, should have told somebody sooner. Or what, the, the enemy was trying to, to, to get her down and make her want to just end her life even or just you know, hold that hate. And so she got her life together. She's done amazing things for God. Even she was being successful in ministry, but that was following her around. And the Lord prompted her. He said, I want you to do something good for your father. That man had never said he was sorry. He had never even owned up to a lot of what he had done, even though it was found out that it was proven. So she was very successful, and she felt like God prompted her to buy her father a home, a, a very nice home. He, he didn't have a great place to live. She bought him a, a, a nice new home to live in. He did not thank her. He moved in and didn't even say thank you. And they, they were living there, and years went by. Time went by, and finally he came to her, and she just continued to pray for him and bless him, do good to him. Now notice, it, it, forgiveness doesn't always mean there's going to be reconciliation. Nothing had happened yet to restore their relationship, and she kept safe boundaries there because he had been abusive. And you don't need to walk back into abuse. Don't misunderstand what I'm saying. But nothing had seemed to happen. Now he was getting older, and now he broke down one day, many, many years after all this had happened. And he began to confess what he had done and say what shame he felt and that he couldn't even bring himself to, he didn't deserve to be her father uh, of the, the things. And God restored that. And she got to pray with her father as he received Christ. He, he pleaded for God's forgiveness. She got to baptize her dad. She was, she was a minister now. She got to do this. And he died a short time later. And I tell you, I hate what that man did to her as a child. But I firmly believe he now, because he committed his life to the Lord, she'll get to have an eternal relationship with her heavenly father and her earthly father. It can be restored. Never give up hope. I always believe that, that God can change people. We can't see how they can change. It seems foolish, but pray for them, bless them, and finally, do good to them. Like what she did, she blessed them. She did good to them. Romans 12 says, do not repay anyone evil for evil, don't be an angry bird. Throw yourself at them. Don't, don't sink to their level. Be careful to do what is right in the eyes of everybody. If it is possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. These are great words of wisdom here. Do not take revenge, but leave room for God's wrath. For it is written, it is mine to avenge. I will repay. Trust me, God's got your back. And one of two things is going to happen if you'll leave this up to the Lord. Either they can, they can be restored, they will give their heart to the Lord, they will repent, or else God's going to get them. And he does a better job than we will. And then we have not damaged ourselves. Don't, don't, let, don't let them hurt you anymore. Don't let the past grip you anymore. And can I tell you why this says love your enemies, uh, you know, bless those who hurt? Can I tell you sometimes our, our worst enemy is ourself? You need to pray for yourself instead of talking down to yourself. Sometimes I'll hear people talk down about themselves to others, and it breaks my heart because the Bible says from the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. And when you start speaking bad about yourself, if you're not careful, you'll start believing it. You may even say it jokingly. Be careful of that. The tongue's powerful, the Bible says. And bless those who persecute you. You may have brought harm on yourself. You may have made some bad decisions in life, and you're, you're, you're frustrated at yourself for what you did. Forgive yourself. The Lord does. And I said this last week. Move on because God has. He wants to bring you to some place better, something better, a new relationship. You may have been horrible at relationships. Don't think that you can't ever find happiness. You just didn't find it that time. Listen to God the next time. Amen. Amen. Instead of rushing into things. And as we do these things, we can start realizing that the future doesn't have to be just overwhelming if we just take it one step at a time. And you're going to hear us, I hope you never uh, get you know, overwhelmed or get bored of us saying things. But we want to repeat things so that we remember them, so that we implement them in our lives. And we're going to talk a lot about taking next steps in our life. Because telling somebody, hey, God has a great future for you, when they're just trying to survive today, can feel like ridiculous. Yeah. Well, what are you talking about? I'm going to. But telling somebody, hey, to get out of that storm, just... Start walking this direction. Take one step at a time. That can be more manageable. 
And we've got some first steps, some things that, that we want to talk about here. In Ephesians 4, this is the last scripture. If somebody could come to the music, please, and help me out. Ephesians 4, 31 says, get rid of all bitterness. Some of y'all need to hear this. Just let bitterness melt away. Because you know the only person that really hurts is you. That's that lighting yourself on fire and thinking the smoke's going to get there. Get rid of bitterness, rage, and anger, brawling, and slander. Sometimes we'll try to put other people down. And y'all, they might deserve it. But don't let that cause you to feel that hate again, that anger, that hurt ever again. Along with every form of malice, just get rid of it. Be kind and compassionate to one another. Forgiving each other. Just as Christ forgave you. You want to get past the past? Start focusing on what's ahead, not what's behind you. Don't worry as much about what people did to you as much what you can use your life, how you can use your life to do good to others. You know how bad it feels for someone to, to manipulate you or lie about you or to, to forget about you, whatever it is. So let's not do that. Let's not repeat that cycle. Amen. The three last things that I want you to remember today, these are the first steps we can take spiritually. Number one is recognizing that the forgiven forgive. And I'm going to say this again, not, not to be uh, judgmental. I don't judge you. The Lord does. I have no idea the condition of your heart. I won't pretend to. And y'all look, I, I'm just like you trying to serve God and follow Him. So, so hear no judgment, but hear what the Lord wants me to say to you. If you have trouble forgiving other people, it may be because you have not really understood how much God has forgiven you of. You may not be in right standing with the Lord. Because the Bible says we cannot receive from God what we do not give to others. That's the Bible. That's not me. Okay, don't get mad at me. It's just truth. If you have trouble forgiving others, examine your relationship with God. Because you may not have known what you signed up for. It's not just a get out of hell free card when we say we commit our lives to Jesus. We are to become followers of Christ. And Jesus was willing to die for those very people that were killing him. And I'm really grateful for it. So shoot, forgiving you is easy. You ain't ever done anything to me compared to what humanity did to Christ. And what I really deserve. So hey, you lied on me yesterday, today, I mean, you posted on social media during this service. What a terrible preacher. Don't even like his haircut. I forgive you. <laughs> the forgiven forgive. Remember that. These, these next two are just as important. Remember that you can't see the future if you can't see past the past. Some of you have no hope for tomorrow because all you can think about is what happened yesterday. You can't see the future if you won't look past your past. And finally, this is where I want to ask you to take those two note cards. Maybe you filled something out or, or do it quickly. Because this is going to seem like a foolish exercise. But remember, God's foolishness, the Lord prompted me to do this this morning. I want to be obedient. God's foolishness is a lot of times, it, it's always better than, than people's wisdom. And I want you to take those note cards. On one of them, you wrote something from your past. Or, or jot it down now. Something from your past that just tries to hold on to you. Maybe, maybe it's unforgiveness against yourself or somebody else. Maybe it's a situation that you just can't seem to forget about, it, get over, whatever it is. And then take that other one. Just put them in, each in a different hand, a different, a different situation. When you've done that, I'm going to ask everybody that, that can, will you stand with me? And have those pieces of paper. I know it seems small. You may not want to write on them, but you just think about it. Think about what it is. And here's what I want us to do before we part ways today. This last part is so important to remember. You have to let go of the past. So you can take hold of God's future. Some of you, that, that card that represents all the negative things in your past, those things that you, you struggle with. Oh, really, like, think of all the emotions attached with those that you don't want to feel anymore. Think of all the stress or the just pain associated with that that you don't want to have in your life anymore. Can I tell you, God wants to replace all that bad with good. He really does. And He really can. I mean, you know, the Bible's true, and it says he can make all things new. 
And just because we're rolling into a new year, there's nothing magical about that. It's just a moment. Sometimes we think about new stuff. We think about a fresh start, new resolutions, or new, you know, motivation. I pray you take advantage of that feeling, that, that this time of year, to make some changes in your life. And it starts right here today. I want you to take that, that thing in your past. I want everybody to close your eyes with me so you just focus on you, not worry about what anyone else is doing. And if you've really got a struggle with really something you're going through, I hope you hate that thing. You don't want to feel it anymore. You don't want it to affect you anymore. You want to be able to forgive and let go of that. Crumple that piece of paper up for me, if you will. Just, just grind that bad boy up. Because it's garbage. It's trash. That needs to be away from you. And I'm going to pray for you that you'll be able to let go of that thing. Because what we do sometimes, we hate it so much. We hate it real bad, but we hold on to it real tight. We're trying to crush it, and we don't realize we're gripping it tighter than ever. You don't have to do that. We're going to let go of that, so all you've got anymore is, is the future that you desire to see in your life, the things that God wants for your life. God wants good for you, not bad. Good feelings for you, not bad. Good expectations, not worry about tomorrow's going to do me, but, man, look at all the opportunities in tomorrow. That's what your Heavenly Father created you for. So I want to pray for you. And then I want you just, just as an act of faith, leave that paper here, the bad one, and just keep that other one with you for this new year. Leave that stuff behind. Throw it away in the trash. Throw it on the floor. Don't put it in your pocket. Don't carry it with you. We'll take care of it. And we won't read it. We're not going to show it to anybody. We just want to get rid of it. Let go of the past so you can take hold of God's future. Now before I pray with you, just let God examine your heart. And I want to ask if I could, Pastor Mark, Pastor Wes, Pastor Anthony, would y'all would y'all come to the front for me, please? We've got some urgent prayer needs. If y'all just stand with me. I talked to uh, Cody and Melody. Their dad's in the hospital right now in a lecture. I want to ask them to, to come up here if they, if they I don't want to embarrass them. But can I tell you, the enemy wants to start creating worry, you know, with what's going on here today. How many of y'all, you, you're going through stuff and you need God's help? I want to pray right now, in this moment, uh, Dale's in the hospital in a lecture and we're going to pray for God to help him, to bring healing to him. Y'all know God doesn't just exist in this church house. He's everywhere. And I just, these are just kids. We want to lay hands on you and be in agreement with you like scripture says and believe for the Lord to help him. And if any of you got stuff in your life you want us to pray for, can I tell you, don't let what's going on in your life right now become that thing in your past that just drags you down and haunts you. Let go of it right now. Give it to the Lord. And if you've got a special need, you want us to agree with you and pray for you, you just raise your hand where you're at? Can I, can I pray for you too? Praise God. Praise God. With a lot of us do. Let's pray together. Twofold. For those things that have been bothering you a long time or that stuff you're going through right now, let's give it all to the Lord. Let go of it. Let go of worrying about it. Let go of trying to figure it out. And let's take hold of what God has for us. Can we pray together? Brothers, would you help me pray? Heavenly Father, God, I thank you so much for your word that says even while stuff was messed up, even while our sins are red, like crimson, like scarlet, that, that you make us, at the same time, you have the power to just wipe all that away and give us a clean slate. And it, by your blood, we were forgiven of our sins, but it also says by your stripes, we are healed, not will be. We are healed. I pray for healing in, in Dale's body, God, right now where he's at in the lecture. We agree with Cody, with Melody, with their family, for you to bless him, bring strength to him, God. It says that we can do all things through you who gives us strength. Give him physical strength, I pray, God. Restore to him the health of his body. And God, by extension, every hand that was raised, it was raised to you, not us. We're, we're just people. We lift our hands to you, God, and say, you are our help. We need you, Lord. And so we pray for you to help us in our lives, in our situations. We let go of the past. We let go of worrying about it, of thinking we have to fix it. We can't on our own. But through you, we can do everything. We can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. So God, we leave the past behind and we take hold of your future. That, that talks about it in Scripture where you work everything out for good. Lord, I pray that people leave behind depression. They leave behind anxiety and worry. They leave behind hate and anger. And we take hold of love, peace, joy, those things you want us to have. Peace that passes understanding. Joy unspeakable. We can't even explain it. It's just coming from you, God. Even though life hasn't changed, we've changed for the better. In the name of Jesus. 
Even though everybody else may still be coming at us, there's haters in our life, we're going to love ourselves and love you. We're going to get past it. We're going to walk through it. In the name of Jesus, and everybody that would receive that blessing, everybody that would agree for, for these prayers to be answered by the one who can fix everything, said, Amen and amen. Would you give God praise in this place for who He is and what, he, what He's doing? I pray for your dad. I pray for your father. I cannot believe He's good. God's God. Amen. Amen. Church, y'all are a blessing to me. Thanks for not making fun of my hair. Thanks for listening to God's word. Can I, can I just say, let's attack this new year. Let's start off strong and just keep going for the Lord. Go with God. Be blessed. We'd love to see you. We don't have service this Wednesday, so I'd love to see you next week, next Sunday. Be in grow groups over here at 10. We'll be serving breakfast at 9, and we'll have service at 11. God bless you. Go with God. Let's go take hold of God's future for us. Amen.